Okay, brothers and sisters. I couldn't finish the other video, so, uh... What's it called? I'm gonna make this short, because there was other things that I had to, uh... had to explain, but I didn't have time, because I don't know how long I can go, so I just want to come here. If you go to the book of Matthew, where John the Baptist is preaching, for those of you who listen to my video, clearly shows the, the Word of God clearly tells us that the church will be removed before the Antichrist is revealed. Way, way before God's wrath is being poured out. Because we're taken before the Antichrist. So, I wanted to finish off with these other things in uh, Matthew chapter 3 where it says, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? How can you flee it if you're going to be in it? It would be totally heretical. It wouldn't make any sense. It's historical. It doesn't make any sense. Just the fact that he said that, you could flee the wrath, because we're not going to be here. And right here, let's go to John, what Jesus said. John chapter 3, verse 18. He who believes in him... Speaking of Jesus, he who believes in him is not condemned. Now, if you were in the tribulation period, you definitely are condemned. Because the whole world is under condemnation. God's going to be pouring out his wrath and anger upon a condemned world. We had the scripture says, for those that believe in Christ, they are not condemned. It doesn't say from a little condemnation. It says that we are not condemned, period. No condemnation. Like Romans chapter 8. But there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But people that get saved after the rapture, they're going to have to face the, uh, the wrath of God. Because he's judging it specifically on the world, and there's no place for them to hide. So they're going to have... Many people will be killed either by the Antichrist or by the wrath. Or they will, yeah, they will be murdered. Murdered. And if you go here to uh, John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, if you're expecting to go to the tribulation, then yeah, the wrath of God abides upon you. But we are not going through the tribulation. God purifies us through his blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace. So, the wrath of God abides upon those that don't believe. So the wrath of God does not abide on us. So, and yet, it says clearly that the time of tribulation is a time of wrath, a time of darkness, a time of gloominess. Like it's, it's the day of the Lord. And then if you go to John chapter 5, verse 24, where it says, Mostly, mo okay, most surely I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, and look, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. You shall not come into judgment, which means you're not going through the tribulation, and you're saved from hell. We're saved from all judgment. We're not appointed unto wrath. People need to understand the whole, whole entire prospect of the tribulation period. What is it designed and planned for? Because the, the Christians, we will suffer persecution, yes. The Bible is very clear on that. All who desire to live God lives in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But there's a big difference between God's wrath and, God, and uh, tribulation. We have suffered the wrath of man. 
We have suffered the wrath of Satan, but we have never, ever, ever suffered the wrath of God. Never. And we never will. God chastises his children. He disciplines them. But he will never pour his wrath upon his, upon his children. And during the tribulation, lots of life is going to be taken. Because God is going to, he's going to shake this world up. His wrath and judgment is going to be falling on this world. So it's clear. We are saved from judgment. We're not appointed unto wrath, which means we cannot be in the great day of his wrath. Very clear. And when does the wrath start pouring out? Revelation chapter 6. Read it. You see all the seals. It's getting more tense, the more tense, the more tense. As each seal is broken. So, like I said, I don't want to make a long... Yeah, the whole purpose of the tribulation is for Israel and the Gentile nations. God is dealing with the rebellion of the Gentile nations. He's dealing... He's dealing with the whole entire world's rebellion against him. Because it's for sin. Okay? God's judgment is coming against sin. Now, our sins are forgiven. Because God judged sin at the cross. You see? There had to be a sacrifice for sin. God's sacrifice was his son, Jesus Christ. So, God judged the sin. Jesus took all the sins of the world upon himself. So for those of us that know Christ, our sins are forgiven, as the scripture says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed their sin, and God has buried it in the, the sea of his forgetfulness. God forgives and he forgets. It's very clear. So if at the time, tribulation period is the time where God is judging sin, and yet we are forgiven, because clearly he that believes is not condemned, so we cannot be here. Because it's not, the tribulation is not, the tribulation period is not part of the church's program. Because God has a program, a secret event that he has planned. He has a different plan for the church and he has another plan for Israel. So the church cannot be here because Jesus took care of all that at the cross. So it's for, specifically, because if you notice, Jesus said clearly, when the Jews rejected him, he said, only now if you would have recognized him. How he often wished to uh, to gather them as a hen gathers her chicks. If they would have accepted him, they would have not. They would have not suffered because they rejected him every time when they've done something. God has judged them. Like they were in Babylon for seventy years. Or I don't know if it was Babylon. I forget. The prophet Daniel was reading the prophecies that God gave to Jeremiah and he said that they were almost done their captivity 70 years and then afterwards Jesus came the Jews rejected him and to fulfill all the Old Testament prophets because God knows everything God said clearly that they'd be scattered because of their sin they were scattered 70 AD came Titus the Roman general his soldiers Siege the temple, they destroyed the temple, they destroyed Jerusalem, took the Jews, killed them. Very few that were left, he scattered them to the four corners of the earth, exactly as the scripture said. The Bible prophecy was fulfilled, but also he said that he'd bring them back. Because anyone that reads the scripture knows it's all talking about Israel, 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 Israel. The church is not even mentioned in there. So, in order for God to deal with Israel, they had to be back in the land, and that happened May 14, 1948. Because let me read that to you in the Old Testament where he's saying that there's dark days coming for Israel. This is what the Lord is saying here. It's in uh, Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be, ki shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through the fire, through the fire, will refrain them as silver is refrained, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, 
and each one will say, The Lord is my God. That was talking to the Jews there. Like, you can read the Old Testament, New Testament, Matthew, no mention of the church. And if you realize that too, what's it called? When Jesus took his disciples onto the mountain, and he said, Who do men say that I am? Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are John the Baptist, come back from the dead. But he said, Who do you say that I am? And then Peter spoke up and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, he said, Blessed are you, Simon Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church. Now, God was not building his church upon a man. He was building his church upon the statement that Peter made. That you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But if you notice, Jesus said, I will build my church upon this rock. He didn't say that I will multiply to the church, I will add to the church. He said, I will build, which clearly shows that the church was not even born yet. She was not even thought of yet. She was not there. Yet the church is a mystery. That's why Paul had a new revelation. That's where God gave him the revelation of the rapture. The rapture is clearly for the church. Like the Old Testament saints, they're not going to be participating in the rapture. Because it's all for the church, okay? It's from the day of Pentecost to the hour of the rapture. The Old Testament saints, they will be resurrected at the second coming of Christ. And then they will, they will join us into the 1,000 year reign millennium. Because it was promised to the church. And it was a mystery. It was never taught before. You can't find it in Matthew. Those are all talking about the second coming and there's no mystery there. And by the way, where it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. For the last trump will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The last trump, you have to understand, at the day of Pentecost, the start of the church age, okay? The church age has to end in order for God to focus his attention back on the nation of Israel, because during the tribulation period, Israel is going to be the center of the nations. Now you can't have the church and Israel running around together because it's totally going to mess up and mix up God's prophetic plan that he has in store for them. Okay? So that's why we're going to be taken out and that's the last trump that ends the church age. That's the logical thing. That's the rapture that changes everything. And God's going to focus his attention back on the nation of Israel. He's going to be working again, as he has done in Old Testament times. He's going to send his two prophets, which will be, which will probably be Elijah and Moses, that will be in Jerusalem. They're going to have a rebuilt temple again. All the customs are going back to Old Testament times. And if you notice, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the murders under the altar, where it says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for their testimony which they held. And they cried, listen to this, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. That's totally different. They're actually crying out for vengeance, and yet the Bible says, Pray. Pray for those that use you. Pray for those that curse you. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that persecute you. And yet here you have them crying out for revenge. And we're not commanded for that. We said leave room for wrath. Do not repay evil with evil. Leave that in God's hands. And yet these people here are crying it out. Which shows everything's going back to Old Testament times. A tooth for a tooth. An eye for an eye. And so on. So that's what ends the church age. That's why God is not working with Israel. Because if we were all going to go through the tribulation together, God would be working with Israel right now. But he's not. That's why he's called himself a bride. Like it says in the Old Testament, that 
he'd call himself a Gentile, a name for himself, and that's what he's done because the Jews rejected him. So he's been working with us, with the body of Christ, and we're all one in the body of Christ, if you recognize, if you know that. We're all one in the body of Christ, and during the tribulation period, because either two bodies are one, there's only one, or one body but many members. During the tribulation period, who's it, who's it going to be? It's going to be the Jews and the Gentiles. They're going to come into the church afterwards, at the end. So it's totally different. So many things would not make sense. And plus, the second coming cannot happen, boom, in the twinkling of an eye. Because the sun's going to be darkened. The moon's not going to give its light. The stars are going to fall from heaven. All that stuff is not going to take place, boom, in a, less than a second. When the rapture happens, it's going to happen suddenly and without warning. Boom, suddenly. Millions of people are gone. And I wanted to read this to you as well. So that is what the last trumpet does. The last trumpet is sound, and then... What's it called? Ends the church age, and then everything... God starts focusing his attention back on Israel. And plus, in uh, Daniel, it's all for the nation of Israel. Like what it says here, what God was saying to Daniel. Because you know what? 69 weeks have already passed for Israel, you know? So God is not done with them yet. It says it's clear. Look. Because you know what? Some people, I don't understand how people are. Like, I really don't. Because they're trying to say everything was fulfilled in 70 AD. If that's the case, we should be with Jesus right now. In the new heaven and the new earth. And the new Jerusalem. Because look. If the 70 weeks are determined for your people. And for your holy city. Daniel was a Jew. So it says, 70 weeks are determined for your people, which are the Jews, and for your holy city, which is Jerusalem, to finish the transactions, to make an end of sin. Didn't Jesus make an end of sin when he was on the cross? Well, he didn't take it away. He didn't... We're going to get no more sins. Gonna, there's coming a day when there will be no more sin. But this is what it's trying to say. To make, and rec to make reconciliation for iniquity... To bring in, look, to bring in everlasting righteousness. Now, this is not happening. Huh. Because look at today. We're not in everlasting righteousness. To seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So, it's clear. Right there. And if you go down where it says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The word week there in the Hebrew is Shabua, which is a period of seven years. So it says clear the tribulation is for Israel. That's why people are trying to throw the church in there. They're destroying the unity that God has planned for Israel. First 69 weeks have already passed. The church was not present during the 69 weeks. And the church will not be present during the 70th week either. Because look all through the Old Testament. It's all referring to Israel. 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 It doesn't mention any other group with the nation of Israel. It's all talking about Israel because Israel is going to be alone. We're not going to be there. We're going to be gone. But this is what I wanted to say. Okay, let's go to the book of... Yeah, let's go to the book of Acts right now. Okay? Let us go to the book of Acts. So the church was born on the day of Pentecost. That's when the church came into play. And then God revealed it to the Apostle Paul about the rapture of the church, the catching away. So it's very clear. So what did Jesus say about... Uh, I want to see if I can find that. I just want to see if I can find it. But I don't know which part it's in, though. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, verse 12. Praise God. I didn't even know where it was, and I flipped right to it. John chapter 16, verse 12. Look what it says. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear it. But you cannot bear them now. Truths. Many truths. He had mysteries to unveil. Because they were on their way to the church. They were on their way to becoming the church. The day of Pentecost. And then he revealed it all. It was new revelations that God had for them. 
because even Paul, even uh, who was it, Peter and James, remember where they went before the council of the Jews? They, they were told that they did not like it. You're filling Jerusalem with your doctrine. And they told them to stop preaching by this name. They didn't want them to preach in the name of Jesus. They said, we ought to obey God rather than man. So it's clear the Jews rejected Jesus. So there's a special time in the future that is specifically for them. It has nothing to do with us. As we said before, judgment is not for us. Okay? That's what people need to understand the whole, whole topic. What is the very purpose of the tribulation? It's the outpouring of God's wrath, which clearly indicates that we cannot be here and we will not be here. Scripture is very clear. But this is what I want to say. Like I said, I don't want to make this video long. I just wanted to cover certain things because I want people to know. So this is going to be part two. Because I have part one. If you haven't listened to part one, go listen to part one. Will the, will the church suffer through the tribulation part one? Now listen to this. This is in the book of Acts, okay? Where it says... Right here. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. This is what it says. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. You get that? To the ends of the earth. So, to the ends of the earth. He's talking to his disciples here. And then chapter 2 is the day of Pentecost. Peter's preaching his first message. And yet 3,000 souls get saved and many are getting added to the church. They're, they're, they're obeying. They, oh, they are obeying Christ. They went everywhere. They preached the gospel everywhere. And then Paul came and he preached and he built churches and so on. You see the church, the church, the church, the church. We are salt and light. We are the light of the world to preach the gospel to every creation, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And yet, go to the book of Revelation. This is what I want to show you guys. But before we get to there, before we get to that, hold on, because there's another thing I want to show you. Okay, wherever there's sin, there's judgment. We are forgiven. Okay, we are forgiven. So judgment cannot come on us. Yes, we will suffer persecution from man and from Satan, but never from God. Because who, who brought on the persecution in the early church? God or man? Man did, of course. Nero killed Paul and Peter. They did all the stuff. Persecution came from man. It did not come from God. Whenever the Jews disobeyed God, then he did it. But far from that, he didn't do a thing. He gave them warnings. If you don't repent, if you don't come back to me, this is what's going to happen. They didn't listen. Look what happened. It happened. They got scattered to the four corners of the earth. And God clearly said that there's coming judgment. They didn't listen before. Now it's going to happen. It's going to be even worse. The whole world. The wrath and judgment of God is going to fall on this planet. So that's what I wanted to make. Because people say, oh, the church has been persecuted. Yes. There's a big difference. Who brought on the persecution? You see? It was man. God didn't do it. So let us go to the book, and that's why it says in Ephesians as well, for this reason the wrath of God is coming upon the what? The sons of disobedience. The wrath of God never comes on, this, on, a, on an obedient person. Come on. Does it make sense? Okay. Let me get into this. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Look what it says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all. Against all what? Obedience? God's children? God's servants? No. No. Look. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So the wrath of God is coming upon wicked men. And look at, look at the, what's it called? Romans chapter 2. This is what it says. Let me start from, I'll start from verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, for, forbiddance, 
and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath, look at that, wrath in the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds, eternal life to those who by patient continuing in doing good seek for glory and honor and immorality, but to those who are look self-seeking and do not obey the truth, they do not obey, you see that? Do not obey the truth by but obeying on an unrighteousness, ignition and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil. There's no mention of the good here at all. You see that? There's no mention whatsoever of the good. It says clearly on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Bible is very clear, my friend. Very, very, very clear. You see, there's only one body on the earth right now, which is the body of Christ. During the tribulation period, God's going to be working with the Jews and the Gentiles. See, that was a big difference. Right now, when somebody gets saved, they become a member of the body of Christ. They come in. They come into the church. The church is the body. It's not a building. Wherever a body of believers are, that is the church. Okay? Right now, God is working with one body. During the tribulation period, He will be working with the Jews and the Gentiles, which are two bodies. There's a big difference. So, that's what I wanted to show you was that. So, his judgment is revealed against sin. Now that's what I want to show you before we close. I'm closing with this, okay? The book of Revelation. Go to Revelation chapter... Uh, hold on, hold on. I want to check something here. I wonder what, Let me see here. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief. Mm -hmm. Willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, let's go to Revelation. Let us go to Revelation chapter 7. So we saw before, remember Jesus told them, the church, wait in Jerusalem till you receive the Holy Spirit and you shall be my witnesses and so on. But yet look at right here. Let me read it to you. Revelation chapter 7. After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the, ascending from the east, having the seal. Look at that. Having the seal of the living God, and he cried, look at that, he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth and the sea or the trees, look at this, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Is this talking about the church? No, it's not. Look. The seal of God on their foreheads. Let's see who it is. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. From the 12 tribes of Israel. They're going to preach the gospel. Why isn't the church here? Because she's taken. Because if you notice, they were sealed. They're going to be supernaturally protected. Nothing will be able to harm them. And yet, there's no mention of God supernaturally protecting all the billions and billions of members of believers 
of church members throughout the whole world. There's no mention of the body of Christ being protected. Now why is that? And it all the way down through history, that's been our duty, is to preach the gospel. And why here don't we see us here? Because she has been taken out. We have been raptured. We've been gone. Revelation chapter 4, you see we're in white garments and we have golden crowns on our head, which is the promise to the church, the crown of righteousness, the crown of rejoicing. We're already received our crowns way before the, the tribulation started. So Revelation chapter 7 shows it clearly that the Jews, 144,000, will be a light to the Gentiles and to people during the tribulation. Revelation chapter 11 is the two prophets that will be prophesying. And then Revelation chapter 14, you have the angels. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour. Look at this. The hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. You see? The hour of His judgment. You know what that's talking about? Hold on. Let me... Okay, we have to go back to Matthew to understand all this. And then I'm closing right after this. Matthew chapter 24. Because Jesus promised that the gospel would be preached in all the world. Many people mistakenly think that's talking about now, but it's not. Because I heard it lots of times. You see, Jesus can't come back until everybody's heard the gospel. That's not talking about that. The rapture is imminent. It can happen at any moment. When God's church is complete, we're out of here. Only he knows what the last only he knows how much numbers are left. Because look at right here. Matthew twenty four. Verse fourteen. And this gospel of the kingdom. You see the kingdom. Right now we're not preaching the kingdom. We're preaching the grace of God, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and his soon return. So they're going to be preaching the king is coming. The king is coming. But look what he says. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all, look at that, all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now what's going to happen? What's going to happen at the end? Because remember the angel said his judgment has come? Talking about Christ's second coming. Because of the second coming, Jesus is going to judge his enemies even though the tribulation was all part of that, judging on sin, but he's going to judge them. They don't know him. They rejected him. They are his enemies. He's going to he's going to destroy them all. That's what the second coming will all be about, is judgment. God taking judgment upon the wicked world. He's going to judge during the tribulation. He's pouring out his wrath, the seven seals, trumpets, bowls, you name it. But remember, when he comes, the first thing that he's going to do before he sets up his 1,000 year reign millennial kingdom is the judgment of the nations because those people that have taken the mark of the beast they're not going into the millennium they're going to be cast straight into hell they're going to go straight into hell and people that got saved during the tribulation are going to enter but those that didn't they're going into hell like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Let's see what it says here, what, what God is going to do. Right here. It's talking about Jesus. And to give you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking, look at this, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 
when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. And then if we go to, uh, I want to show you this too before we close. In the book of, uh, there's a big difference. This is talking about the second coming right here. Look at this. Zechariah chapter 14, right here where it says, wait, where is it? Yeah. Thus the Lord my God will come in all, look at that, in all the saints with you. All the saints. Now how is he going to come with them unless they're with him? Because we're going to be gone. We're going to be with him when we come back at the second coming. Because look at here too. This is what's going to happen at the end. Now Enoch, the seventh from, okay, now Enoch, the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints. So we're, we're going to return with Jesus on white horses. And he's going to defeat the enemies, the armies of the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon. But what is Jesus going to do when he comes? Look, to accuse judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoke against him. These are groomers, the groomers, groomers walking according to their own lust and they great swelling words flaming people to gain advantage. And it goes on and on. So that's what's going to happen. We're going to come back with Christ. You see we're coming back. There's a big difference there. The rapture, we go up to be with our king. At the second coming, we come back. So the rapture, he comes for his saints. And at the second coming, he comes with his saints. There's a big difference. So, that's all I wanted to share. So for us that are in Christ, our job, we need to preach the gospel. Knowing of what's coming, the rapture is going to take place. The tribulation, and then the second coming, which time is short. We know what is coming our way is judgment. We need to tell people about the Lord while well, there's still time because very soon we are leaving this planet and knowing judgment is about to fall and the second coming will be all about judgment. And the sad thing is the majority of the people that are alive today will not be alive at the end of the, of the uh, tribulation period. The people that will be alive in the beginning of the tribulation will not be alive at the end of the tribulation. So, let's preach the gospel and we leave the rest in God's hands. This is what i got to say, people. I just want to sh share that part with you. This is part two. So if you guys haven't listened to part one yet, go listen to part one. Will the church suffer through the tribulation, part one? And no, it will not. That is the good news. We're to be waiting for his son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. For God did not appoint us to wrath. We are not the object of God's wrath. We're not appointed unto wrath, which means we cannot be in the great day of his wrath. So praise God. To understand the tribulation is to understand everything. Because if you don't, you're going to be totally confused, like saying all these other things that other people are trying to throw the church in, which are, is totally ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous. The church is clearly saved from God's wrath, like we just saw in the Bible. It's clearly in Scripture. So uh, we're not appointed unto wrath. We cannot be in the great day of His wrath. When the judgment comes way before then, the Restrainer. Once we're gone, then the Antichrist can take his place. This is all I got to say. Live ready, be ready, stay ready, ladies and brothers and sisters. We're leaving this planet very soon. So just live ready, stay ready, and be ready. Our King is coming very shortly. We are leaving this planet very, very, very soon. So this is all I got to say, and uh, <clears throat> God bless you all. This is all I got to say to you all. Just live ready and be ready. Jesus is about to come, and when that when the trumpet sounds, zap, we're out of here to the glory of God. What a promise we have. Once the last trumpet sounds, we're out of here. 
This is all i got to say. What a wonderful promise that we have in Jesus. Everything's come in the past very fast. I'm just waiting for Jesus. That's all I'm waiting for. And this is all i got to say, brothers and sisters. Just live ready, be ready, and stay ready. And God bless.